Hi guys, it's Troy at The Full Setup, back with another review video, and today I'm going to teach you how to overclock your GTX 1650 graphics card. Now, obviously, before you start this, there is a risk when you overclock. It's not guaranteed for everyone, but what I'm going to show you today is, you know, very safe, but it will void your warranty. Obviously, your GPU manufacturer is going to have to prove that you're overclocking it, because overclocking is software-based. Um, but yeah, really, you just want to ask yourself, do you want to overclock? One thing to remember is you're only going to gain about 5 to 10 frames per second, and with the GTX 1650, it's actually closer to 5 frames per second, but overclocking's fun, so I thought I'd do you a guide. As you can see here, we've got a few bits of software on screen, and there should be links in the description to those. So this one is called the Heaven Benchmark. And as you can see here, we've got an overlay, which has got all the stats of my graphics card, CPU, etc. And that is actually run from River Tuner, which is bundled with MSI Afterburner. And I am using an MSI Ventus graphics card today, but you can use MSI Afterburner with any graphics card you want. The reason I like to use it for overclocking is obviously we get the fancy overlay as well. Now I'm not gonna teach you how to set up the overlay today because a good friend of mine, one shot over at Rules of Entertainment made a fantastic video the other day on how to do this. There's a link to that in the description as well. So make sure you go and watch that video. Make sure you subscribe to his channel as well. Now, before we start, there are a few things I want you to do in these settings. One thing I'm just going to show you quickly is this is the theme I'm using. If you're thinking your MSI Afterburner looks a lot different to mine, this is a new theme, which looks sick. But the things I want you to turn off is start with Windows and start minimized. As I mentioned earlier, GPU overclocking is software based. Every now and then, if you go a little bit too far, Afterburner can crash and it will actually keep those settings when you reboot. So that will just make your system crash on boot. Nobody wants that. You just have to come down here really quick and kill MSI Afterburner before it starts. Now, I'm pretty confident at using Afterburner. I've been using it for years, so I'm going to leave it on. But just saying, anyone that's new, I would recommend turning them off. Also, you may want to have unlock voltage control, unlock voltage monitoring, and force constant voltage turned on. And you always have to hit OK afterwards to apply the settings. Also as well, there is, you can tick that, so you can have custom fan profiles. But for this test, as you can see there, that's custom fan profile. Untick the cog. And that's for the auto fan profile. We're going to max out the fans for this video. Now, you don't have to. I just think it's always good to, you know, have as much air going at the graphics card as you can for when you're doing overclocking, for when you're just doing your testing. So you just click the tick box there. You'll probably hear the fans ramp up behind me. Now, one thing you want to do is let this program run for a while. I'd probably say upwards of an hour. But I know that once this graphics card has been on for a bit, its boost rating is always between about that sort of, you're seeing that, that lower 18, mid 18s, up to the 1900 megahertz area. So basically what we need to do is make up the difference. So all GTX 1650s, they are going to overclock between 1975 megahertz and 2050 megahertz. So you're just essentially adjusting the core to make up that difference. But because this is a Turing based graphics card, it actually has auto overclocking. Here we can select the OC scanner, which we're going to do in a second. Now, OC scanner doesn't do anything to the memory. One thing I've also found as well is that you want to have your core voltage maxed out to get the best results in OC scanner. But adding to the core voltage is completely your decision. Now, the way that MSI Afterburner is designed and the way that AMD and NVIDIA graphics cards are designed that without sort of doing BIOS mods, you can't give it more voltage than it's supposed to have. You can give it extra, but you can't give it voltage that will kill it. Now, because this is a graphics card that's powered completely by the PCIe um, Express, there isn't a, any extra we can add to the power limit. Although if versions with six or eight pins get released later down the line, you may have the ability to turn this up like the 1050 Ti. So if you have got that ability, turn it up. You also want to max out your temp limit as well. Now, before you run the OC scanner, you want to close down heaven. Obviously, we don't want one program running while we're getting that all together. You're going to select OC scanner and we are just going to do scan. Now, this can take up to about 20 minutes. I'm not going to make you sit for it. So we'll come back at the end and look at the OC scanner results. So OC scanner has now finished. As you can see here, it took about 11 minutes. And you're going to be wondering, how does it apply? It says overclock curve exported to MSI Afterburner. And as we can see here now on the core clock, we have an option for curve. And if you click here, we can now see the curve that the OC scanner is done. So let's boot up Unigen Heaven and have a little look. Now you do have to tick it to apply it. And as you can see here now, we're about 1980 megahertz dropping down to 1950 so that's why i said the lower end would be that you would be able to overclock your card from so we really want to push it a bit further 
So firstly, we're going to start with the memory. Now, this GDDR5 memory, I've been sort of overclocking this on the video graphics card for probably the last three gens now. And for the most, all of you should be able to do 500 megahertz. As we can see here, the memory's gone up. Now, I have a card where I've been able to push like 750 or 1,000, but I find that it just doesn't really transfer over to games. You know, it's, it's such a small performance, maybe one FPS. So, yeah, you may be able to go more than 500 megahertz, but I, I recommend that's probably the sweet spot for you. If you do get any crashes, I would probably, you know, set it to 350 and start to work your way up. Now, I do find the whole OC scanner thing to be a little bit buggy. As you can see, look, you know, it's dropped back down again. Obviously, it's good. It auto does it for you, but we don't really want to do that. We want to do manual overclocking. So we want to start at 100 megahertz. That is where I suggest all of you start. And here you can see again, here we go. We boost up to that lower, lower limit that I was talking about. That's sort of between 1950 and 2000 megahertz. That's where we're at. Really, this card... I've been able to push it to 150. Now, I recommend you do small increments at a time. Run 100 megahertz or a bit. Make sure you're stable. Then bump it up to maybe 125. If you have some crashes back down, if you don't have some crashes, work it back up. But where I'm at with it, my sweet spot is 150 megahertz. And it is a bit weird. I'm getting in like in heaven here. It's sort of sitting around the 2000 megahertz mark. When I run Shadow of the Tomb Raider, it sits around 225. So you will sort of get that variance per game and per program that you're using here you can see here we're up at 2040 megahertz so it is going to sort of move about a little bit but that is essentially it really and then once you've got that you can save it to a profile so we're just going to click save here and i'm going to save that to profile one so that's my that's the profile that we're going to have it to i would probably also recommend saving a couple of extra profiles so save a profile at 100 megahertz save one at 125 one game that I've always found never liked my maximum overclock is PUBG. For some reason, I normally have to lower it a bit. Star Wars Battlefront is another game as well. In between updates, I seem to have to run it 25 megahertz lower. So it really is just finding the sweet spot for all of your games. Um, but I do hope this helped you out. As I said in the video, it'd be really good if you can post your scores with the card that you're using in the description. Let me know how you're getting on with it. If you do have any issues, just give me a shout and I will try and get back to you as soon as I can. Make sure you go and check out uh, One Shot's video on the overlay and I'll be back with some more videos very soon.